Hello friends, this video on digestion and absorption part 19 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. With this we have reached towards the end of our discussion on the digestive system. So if you want to have a quick review of whatever we have studied so far, so let us have a quick recap. So the story of the digestive process starts with food and food enters our body through the mouth. From mouth, it enters into the oral cavity. In the oral cavity, uh, teeth, tongue and saliva. Three of them play a very important role in uh, breaking down food into simpler particles. Almost 30% of the carbohydrates are also hydrolyzed in the oral cavity by salivary amylase. Then the food passes down through the esophagus. It reaches the stomach. In the stomach, the gastric glands are present which produces or secretes the gastric juice which contains enzymes as well as hydrochloric acid which makes the medium inside the stomach acidic and activates the enzymes. The enzymes help in the digestion of proteins and fats here in the stomach. So proteins and fats get partially digested. Then from the stomach it passes on to the small intestine. So the small intestine receives the partially digested food. It also receives a lot of enzymes from pancreas as well as it receives bile juice from liver and all these things get mixed up in the small intestine and complete absorption or complete digestion of food take place. So all the food particles get converted into their simplest absorbable forms and then it passes on further into the small intestine to jejunum and ileum where the absorption takes place with the help of villi. Now once the absorption has taken place, the undigested food material is passed on to the large intestine where the first part that is cecum, there are some sympathetic bacteria resides which try to digest some substances which could not be digested by the human digestive system and then finally some absorption of water takes place and feces are formed by bacterial fermentation as well as solidification and finally the feces are expelled out through the anal opening by a process called defecation. So this is the overall digestive process and the role of the enzymes and uh, the role of um, the various acids in between all those things I have already discussed. So now the question is digestive system is a very important system. Now there are many disorders that can also take place due to some fault in the digestive system. Now digestive system is not about one organ. There are several organs involved. If there is something wrong with the esophagus, there might be some disorder. If there is something wrong with the large intestine, there might be some disorders. So there are several digestive disorders which are seen in human beings. For example, stomach flu, jaundice, diarrhea, constipation, indigestion, so these are some of the very common digestive disorders which are faced by human beings. So let us have a quick look at the cause and symptoms of these disorders. So let us start with stomach flu. Now the cause of stomach flu is parasites like the tapeworm or roundworm or bacteria or virus which lives in our intestine. So when the, these microorganisms are partying in our intestine, as you can see here, we'll have problems like stomach flu. Now, how do you know that you've got a stomach flu? The intestinal tract gets inflammated. So this part of the intestine, it will be swollen up. So that is a symptom which says that the person is suffering from stomach flu. Jaundice, it is a very common disease and I, I think you would have heard about this disease. So jaundice is something very common and the cause is the deposition of bile pigments. So bile which is secreted by liver. So sometimes it happens that liver is continuously producing the bile salts, the bile pigments, but the bile pigments are not getting used up in the process of digestion somehow. So when the bile pigments are getting left over, so the deposition of bile pigments will cause this disease called jaundice. How do you know that somebody is suffering from jaundice? The skin and the eyes turn yellow. So this yellowish color is always because of this bile pigments called bilirubin or biliverdin. So you would have seen that somebody who is suffering from jaundice, they are uh, repeatedly asked to undergo the uh, blood tests and all just to check the level of the bile pigments in their blood. So as the level decreases, the jaundice tends to become normal. 
Next is diarrhea. Diarrhea is associated with loose motions where, where you actually tend to pass a very frequent um, defecation happens, very frequent defecation happens when there is some infection of the colon or the small intestine because the large intestine is mostly responsible for the formation of feces. So if something wrong happens to the large intestine, there is a possibility of diarrhea. Symptoms are frequent watery stools. So too much of water because the, since the large intestine is not functioning properly, so it is not able to absorb the water. Therefore, the watery stools are coming out very frequently. Next one is constipation. This is another pain. So in constipation, the cause is irregular bowel movements. So when the movements are irregular, I mean, as, as I said, the muscle layers of the intestine. So due to the contraction of those muscles, the movement of the food along the intestine take place. Now when those movements are not regular, sometimes it is very fast, sometimes very slow. So what will happen? That will cause issues with the movement of the food. So the food will not pass timely from one organ to the other. So this might lead to symptoms like there, there might be difficulty in passing stools which are retained within the rectum. Now the rectum will store the feces and then after some time it will eliminate it through the anal opening. But if, if somebody is suffering from constipation, it becomes the stool becomes extreme, it gets too much solidified and then it becomes very difficult to eject it or to eliminate it through the anal opening. So sometimes it is very painful as well. Indigestion. So the cause of indigestion or the process of digestion, uh, whatever you understand, it is all about the enzymes, action of the enzymes on the food which you eat. Now, if there is a disbalance, if you eat too much, what happens? The amount of enzyme that is being secreted by your stomach or pancreas or intestine, they become insufficient to digest that much of food. So overeating can be a cause of indigestion. Another cause could be that you are eating the right amount of food, but the organs inside your body are not able to produce sufficient amount of enzymes. Maybe the gastric juice is not produced in the right amount or the pancreatic enzymes are not produced in the right amount. So insufficient enzyme secretion could be another reason. Another reason could be food poisoning. Maybe there was something wrong with the food. Some uh, maybe some microorganisms were there in the food or some worms were there in the food because of which food the food itself got poisoned once it went inside your body. So these are some of the causes and the symptoms can be feeling of fullness. So when the food is not getting digested, you will not feel hungry because the food is still there somewhere either inside your stomach or it is there in, in your small intestine but somewhere it is stuck it is not getting digested why do you feel hungry because whatever we eat that get digested so once that is completely digested that get absorbed and the undigested food goes out through the anal opening so everything becomes empty inside so when your stomach is empty you tend to feel hungry but if the food is not getting digested properly then what is going to happen so it is stuck somewhere inside your body so you do not feel like eating something so there is always a feeling of fullness and you do not feel hungry so these are some of the common digestive disorders thank you Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.